I think one of the most crucial elements uh, uh, that uh, the Prime Minister was talking about was this need on his part to have this legal certainty. And this was the, the conf most confusing element, I think, of this entire conflict, uh, where the movement towards military action had been set, uh, but it was clear that Blair needed the legal basis for it. And the Attorney General at that time, Peter Goldsmith, uh, was hesitant at the beginning in, in stating that the resolutions that were uh, provided by the UN Security Council allowed the military action without secondary resolutions. And you saw where there was a gradual movement uh, towards uh, agreeing that in fact the resolution, this key resolution 1441, uh, was in, in essence self-executing. It did not require uh, a second resolution. And this was absolutely crucial, and this was the real debate as to why there was a, a, a movement from some hesitation in admitting that or, or suggesting that there needed to be a second resolution with, at the end, legal certainty. Uh, but Blair said he needed it. He suggested it. without it he would not have gone to war, um, and that's where the, uh, the, the, the legal movement went. And very much uh, in the spotlight is how much uh, former Prime Minister Blair, how much attention he paid to uh, the, the feelings of the former Attorney General, Lord Goldsmith, and how Lord Goldsmith gradually shifted his position to supporting the mm. case for war. It really does bring to bear the question of the separation of power, so to speak, between the executive and the independence of the judiciary. What's your sense of what was said there, this question of whether Blair influenced Lord Goldsmith? Yeah, I mean, Blair was very careful in saying that uh, Lord Goldsmith uh, was, uh, had the, 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 uh, the, the independence to give whatever advice he would give. Uh, Lord Goldsmith uh, is well known here uh, in England, uh, a great integrity. But clearly you get the sense that the decision for military action was already moving forward. It had advanced in a very significant way and that there was then attempt to somehow mold the legal basis for doing so. And, and the Prime Minister needed that legal basis uh, in order to move forward. And that's the, the uncomfortable aspect of this. Uh, and it's, I'm, I'm hopeful that this Commission will continue to, to uh, drill down on, on that particular issue. I think it's the most crucial point uh, of the decision to go to war is how that legal, uh, the decision to, to, to grant and to give a green light to go forward uh, at the end when clearly going up to that point, there was really uncertainty and doubt about whether a second resolution was needed. This inquiry is an inquiry. It is not a trial. But the questioning mm. has nonetheless been quite robust. What have you made of, of the exchanges and how Blair is being handled by, by those on the panel? Well, I think this is a, pa a panel that's very competent. I think the questions are sharp. Uh, I think they're penetrating. I think Blair is standing his ground, stating that uh, this all had to do with this uh, this paradigm shift to 9-11 when he felt that uh, Saddam Hussein, uh, uh, with weapons of mass destruction that, they, that he felt uh, that Saddam had, was sufficient uh, to start looking at a regime change. Um, and so I think that that was very, uh, I, I think this is very important. It's also, I think, important to note that I think the UK and the government should be congratulated for having undertaken this type of inquiry, although it's not a court of law. Uh, it's still very, very important that this type of public hearing takes place. It certainly has uh, similar types of hearings have not taken place anywhere else, including the United States.